Okay, um, look, this is a new kind of segment. I don't know what you want to call it, but basically, I want to celebrate the art of building electric skateboards. When this YouTube channel first started, it was called Electric Skateboard Builder, I think, and all I spoke about is building electric skateboards and how I did it. This is way before Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 and all that. Lately, I haven't spoken that much about building electric skateboards, and I really want to pay homage back to the roots where I came from and where so many people are building awesome electric skateboards now. And probably the best place to see it is on our forum, electric-skateboard.builders. Check it out. There's so many awesome builders on there. Some of the most amazing electric skateboards you'll ever see are on this forum. There's a category called eboard builds, and you can check it out. And in this segment, I'm going to go into that category, and I'm already, I've got my laptop here, I'm already in there, um, but it's super easy to get to. E, it's eSkate, the number eight builds, um, and then I'm going to basically randomly choose a build and see what they've done. So here we've got a DIY tramper, 35E e mountain board. I don't know what the 35 means. Um, Jewel Vesk 6. Jewel Vesk 6. Don't censor me, Trampa, for doing this video. Censored Emax GT 5345. I think they're the motors. But anyway, let's... So this is a build by Squad. I know I know Squad. He makes some sick builds. Check. We'll put the link in this video so you can do it. But I just want to go through it. This is, like, for expert builders, this is probably going to bore you. But for the noobs out there who um, want to understand what all this is that people are building, I'm going to hopefully help you understand it. Some of it I might not even understand. So let's have a look. It's, it's a sweet build. He's got a headlight on there. He's obviously powering that out of his, his main battery system. It's dual drive. It's a chain drive system. Sweet. Now this guy, I'm pretty sure he built all of the motor mounts and everything himself, which is really cool. That's what building electric skateboards is about. Now those motors look pretty sick. They're not, you won't see the, those motors. They're not that common. Um, I can't give you a, a review or a personal impression on them because I've never used them, but they look pretty sweet. So here he, he's milling his own keyway. If you don't know what a keyway is, it's the, the thing to hold your, your pulleys or your, I think he's using chains, so you don't really call them, I think you call them the pinion gear or whatever. Um, but he's milling a section in the, the axle or the shaft of the motor to put a key in it to prevent the rotation of the pulley that's on there. Um, and he's done a fantastic job. You can see it there, that little key on there. He obviously had to fully disassemble that motor to do it, which is no easy task. There you go. So there's the, I wonder what he calls these things. Um, sprockets, there you go. He's calling them sprockets. So he's also bored and tapped sprockets. So he's customizing everything. This is what it's all about, guys and girls. This is great inspiration. He's got a uh, some sort of bracket that he's fabricated here for his vests. Nice. He's running these are maybe these are Chucker vests. I'm not sure. Chucker. If you don't know who Chucker is, he um, makes vests. Um, he used to. I don't think he does it anymore. Um, but he made some of the most reliable ones, handmade them. So, got a got a good name for himself doing that. This guy's he's actually put some heat sinks on the MOSFETs there, which is interesting. Not a common thing. Looks like he's got a custom capacitor bank there and a gigantic 
What is that? He's got a fuse. That looks like a shunt or something. I don't know what that is. Maybe you can, in the comments below, you can tell me what you think that is. Um, but, very neat. He's got, it looks like he's using a, I think they're called Pelican cases, but it's like a waterproof case. You can buy them. Just look on AliExpress and eBay and the, you just check the dimensions, right? Work out what you want to put in it. Check the dimensions and you can buy these really strong cases that are fully waterproof and very popular with the, the Tramper style builds. So he's he, this dude's literally milling his own motor mounts here. Um, look at that. That's another level. I mean, not everyone has tools to do that, but I've seen people get sheets of aluminium and just a hacksaw. Just draw what you want and just cut out with a hacksaw, drill it. I mean, this guy's precision looks on another level. Um, look at that thing. They look beefy as. Oh yeah. Very nicely cleaned up there. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. Um, not many people are going to be able to do that at home. A lot of the times, I mean, that's I used to get stuck on the motor mounts because I didn't have the tools and the machinery and whatnot to make anything like that. And so then I had to outsource that. Um, I actually shared my drawings, open source my motor mount drawings. So you need to make your own mounts and you want the dimensions and stuff you can take my original drawings and that might help you um, but just find someone with a machine shop or one of these people on the Eastgate builders for him okay so he's mounted I don't know that looks like just a standard bike light probably like an LED bike light normally you got to check the voltage of these things you don't want to just whack any light on there. Cool, he's got a nice little mount for it. That's well done. That looks good. Um, I don't know, I don't know if there's an on off switch. Normally, you want some sort of switch if you've got a light like that. Um, <laughs> that's, he's obviously got a decent workshop. He's, he's well set up. Uh, now what's he doing? He's actually, it looks like he's going to put hall sensors in his motor, is he? Oh no. Let's read that. What is he doing? He's putting a thermistor and hall sensors. Yeah. Today I installed hall sensors and thermistors in both motors. Had to mill the stator a little bit to fit. The sensors, they're spaced 120 degrees apart, which is pretty standard. Yeah, that's that's pretty risky, guys. I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that, because if you accidentally nick the copper windings in your state up, it completely shorts your motor out. So this guy, he's doing some risky stuff. I wouldn't recommend. Um, but, I mean, it looks like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, that's, it's nice. Those, those sprockets. Um, I'll bead blast sprockets and hot blue them to prevent them from rusting. Nice. I don't know what hot blue is. May, does anyone know what hot blue is? You can tell me what that is. I don't know. I'm not an expert in everything, believe it or not. Yeah. Picked up motor mounts from anodizing. Did hot black oxide on the sprockets in the workshop tonight. So yeah, it must be some form of just chemical process to to oxidize the surface, to help prevent corrosion. It's pretty epic that he did that in his own garage. Um, he's he's got some little rubber spaces there on those screws. And I think the reason he's done that is, yeah, it says there, rubber allows the deck to flex and dampens vibration. That's an important little concept there, guys. Even if you build a normal electric skateboard and you're mounting your 
battery box on a normal deck, decks flex all the time. So you've got to think about how you handle the wood flexor. In this case, it's like a, you know, it's a mountain board made out of epoxy and fiberglass and whatever, but it flexes as well. But your battery box won't flex the same way. So you've got to factor that in. Otherwise, what happens? You end up ripping your screws out. So he's gone with some rubber grommets, which is cool. Um, nice. An amp meter. He's got a 200 amp shunt. Yeah, that's what that's what that thing was before. Where is it? Jesus, what a great build thread. If you're gonna do a build thread on the forum, take heaps of photos. Just have your phone next to you and always take photos of your build as you're going. Because then you can make these awesome threads and it's a great way for other people to, to learn how to do it. Oh, I've gone past it now. Here it is, here it is. There's this big shunt, that thing there. So that obviously came in his um, amp meter and he's put it in line with the power there so he can get a, a current reading, which I mean, probably a bit of overkill. Um, but cool, if you're into that, do it. I probably wouldn't worry about it though. I mean, you don't really need to know how much current you're drawing, you could get Perhaps you could get an app for your VESC with a Bluetooth module and you could see some of the data on your app if you wanted. That might be an easy way to do it. Uh, but look at that, that's a beast. Congratulations. What's your name? What is your name? Squad. Epic build. And this this build was back in 2006. You know, these tramper builds are a lot more common now. There's a few people out there, Cali in New York City, who builds these if you want one custom made that sort of looks like this check out Cali he can make them for you um, so we'll put his link in the video below as well so you can get your own thing like this so anyway guys a little bit of me ranting but um, maybe this is not what you want to see maybe it is please let us know in the comments if you like this sort of stuff I mean it doesn't take much time out of my day you know 10 minutes to sit here and check out some of these builds that people have done and help explain some of the stuff, hopefully in layman's terms for the noobs um, who need to understand what's going on. So um, if you like it, let me know. Put your comments below. Thank you. Put your comments in your bottom. <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom.